Awesome. Thanks everyone for joining the Cosmos SDK community call. A um, couple of things on the agenda, um, and I think more will be added as we progress through the call. So I just wanted to give everyone a team update and what we're working on. So I will share my window. No, no. Am I sharing? Yes. Okay. So pulling up the SDK team project board um, so I can walk through what we are working on. Um, so out of the Q4 roadmap, um, we are on the verge of uh, merging the ABCI integration, ABCI 1.0 integration. There's an open PR. Reviews are welcome. Um, so I'd highly encourage everyone to take a look. Um, we've been working with the Tenderman team, the DYDX team, and various teams in the ecosystem on canonicalizing that API. Um, we still plan on working on uh, 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 separating SDK modules and standalone Go modules. Um, we are we kind of paused that in order to deliver Twilight uh, core app framework. Liquid staking, liquid staking is actively being worked on. Um, we're discussing uh, right now. If we are uh, releasing in 047 or after, um, we'd love to hear thoughts on that um, from everyone here. Uh, the Sanmo textual, so Amari has been leading that work alongside Joe Abbey and Jim from Agoric. Um, it seems like it's making amazing progress. Um, Amari uh, mentioned that he uh, created a demo of it working with SDK, so that's super exciting. And the Ledger support will also commence uh, in the next couple uh, days, weeks uh, for that as well. Auto generate CLI commands. So Aaron um, has already delivered the uh, queries, query support for auto CLI. Um, it's actually merged into main. And uh, next, we'll be adding the auto CLI configuration for other modules. Right now, auth is supported. Um, and so um, it's exciting because now when you're writing a module, instead of writing a bunch of boilerplate CLI code, you'll be able to just provide a config and everything else will be handled for you. Um, we're still, uh, as we're progressing through the quarter, we're also talking about uh, the protobuf package versioning and diving into that and what that means as we split at modules into standalone Go modules. Um, we're right about done. Um, there's one last PR that's open and in review, um, ready to be merged, I believe on rewriting the and simplifying CLI test to use Tendermint mock. Um, so previously our CLI tests were used as end-to-end -end integration tests, and we've, mig we've migrated that, those tests to a, a, to a test folder at, in the root level, while the CLI tests have become interface tests. Um, here from the sprint, um, you can see that uh, the last sprint we uh, made a lot of progress also um, due to the security incident. We also did some cleanup on IVL. Um, major shout out for John for onboarding onto IVL. Um, so the update there is there was a Binance hack and um, due to proof support in the IVL repo itself um, within the Cosmos SDK, we actually um, don't use that proof, uh, those proofs, we use ICS 23. And so we opted to actually delete those proofs from IVL and only use and uh, bring ICS23 to be native on the tree. And in doing so, um, we deleted the code that caused the Binance issue. Um, right now, there's a lot of work on the textual, um, assigned mode textual. There's a couple other like uh, UX issues um, that we're fixing, something like configs. Um, uh, so we all know the issue. Uh, when you start a new binary with a new config, your config doesn't get updated, so we want to do that. Uh, adding back TX and code, this has been a, uh, a long-standing ask, so people can encode against an endpoint. And then we're also starting to dive into the store package. So um, Informal is assisting us with a spec slash audit of the store package. Um, while we are writing regression tests and benchmarks in order to prepare for a rewrite of the store package. Um, someone. Okay. 
Um, everyone can still hear me, right? Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Joe, Abby, we just, we just gave you a shout out. You missed it. It's a shame. I'll, uh, I'll catch the recording. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, uh, and yeah, so that's kind of like the team update. Um, does anyone have any questions in regards to any of the things I mentioned? Next, want to give a update on Twilight. So the next release of the SDK, we're on the cusp of it. So um, we've already delivered the changes needed for interchain security. Um, we've uh, fixed some amino registrations. We're also adding amino JSON proto annotations. So this was an ask from the, um, well, Aaron identified the issue and then the JS uh, team from Cosmology and Confio came um, asking for something like this. And so we're working with them on getting you're getting a uh, amino JSON annotations for protobuf, so we can um, so you don't have to depend on amino and protobuf. You can actually just get the amino type names from something like this in the protofile. On top of that, we have phase one of ABCI plus plus, so base app plus plus. Um, we're also on the verge of merging this, and after that merge, we will be ready to cut a uh, beta or alpha. And in doing so, uh, we'll prepare test nets that everyone is welcome to join. Um, in that time, we'll also be finalizing the liquid staking um, work that Inclusion did, and we are upstreaming. Um, this work did undergo an audit. Um, we are just piecemealing it into the SDK so the SDK team ourselves can understand it better. And so, and so yeah, um, those are like the main outstanding items. We also want to add a bunch of documentation um, about upgrades as we've started to see a bigger, um, more cracks showing in everyone's understanding of upgrade. And so we want to make sure everything's cleared up. So there is, so the SDK team isn't showing up to every upgrade issue um, or teams like uh, Joe aren't coming to save the day every time. Um, any questions there? Love it. Awesome. The other thing I would love to discuss is, or at least show everyone, is the work that the SDK team, in particular John, has been doing with uh, IDL. So currently, the, the problem that was identified um, by Dave from Osmosis was that uh, he's been diving into IVL for the past couple of months, as we all know, did the fast node system, but uh, IVL was using a hash as the key, so we weren't able to take advantage of that locality, but also the design of IVL um, had some pitfalls. And so John wrote this ADR. Um, I'd love everyone to jump in and review and chime in um, with your takes, but essentially, uh, changing the node key from a hash, a random hash, to a, let me find it. It's down here and I can show. Um, to, we conclude, so there's a implementation of a global nonce. Um, that is the PR before this PR, so PR592. Um, and that implementation uses a nonce as uh, your key. Um, and now after many discussions, the uh, more approachable um, design is to have a prefix uh, version and a local nonce to that version. Um, and so this will, um, the, the down, the, there's a small downside that like there is an extra couple bytes um, added to the key, but the added benefit is now we are able to take advantage, take advantage of that locality and compaction of uh, level DB or LSM trees will be a lot simpler um, and a lot less exhaustive to our machines. Um, are there any questions about this work? I have to keep checking if I'm muted. Sorry, can you provide 
Hi, Mark. Could you provide yeah. uh, some links? I'm just having a hard time following along to track yeah. these are all being set up. Thank you. So that's the ADR. Let me just. Awesome. Posted the, the link in here, but also um, posted in the HackMD. Um, Jim also pointed up. Um, so if you're in the Bay Area, there is a there's a Cosmos event in San Mateo um, called Securing Cosmos for the Next Millennium. Are you speaking at it, Jim? Oh, no, but I'll be. Uh... Uh, I'll be attending, health permitting. Nice, nice. Definitely let us know how it goes. <laughs> Amazing. Um, uh, I'm going to ask, I, I was going to ask if there's any more any questions, but I think I already, yes, it's in the invite to the call. Uh, Michael, Michael just asked if there's a hack MD. Um, Um, and so, uh, in light of the previous, so now there's like some discussion points. Um, so the first discussion point that I'd love to bring up is a circuit breaker. And so just for context, um, so they, what a circuit breaker could do or could be is basically a way for a chain to disable messages from being executed. Um, and why would a chain want this? Well, if there's an exploit happening in a specific uh, code execution path, in the current scenario, they will have to like halt their chain, fix the bug. Um, it's unknown how long that would take, and then restart the chain. The, the halting of it and unknow not knowing how long it would take to bring back up is kind of like the, the hard estimation here because there are IBC like clients that do expire um, that chains will now have to do governance proposals to restart, and there's other factors here. And so a potential solution is something like a circuit breaker. So a chain can, through governance, elect um, parties, a group, a multi-sig, a, um, a address um, that has the right to disable execution or acceptance of a message type in the state machine. Um, and so this is something we were talking about in the in our team call just before this, um, and kind of like the question that arose there was, um, there there's like two two there's like a UX question where, is it okay if it's like a global lock? So that means that like uh, you could add like X ABC address to have the right to disable any message. Or is it more preferred that you'd like A to have the right to the old X, X and Y message, and you'd like B to only have the right to disable Z message, and C can, and then C would be able to disable all messages. Um, and so that was kind of like a, a question we wanted to get feedback on. Um, does anyone have any thoughts there? Uh, yeah, we uh, had implemented that for uh, for bits of our contracts, uh, for some of our contracts, and uh, found the the finer grained uh, sensitivity to be uh, very useful. That uh, that it lets uh, uh, sort sort of little little sub communities vote on their own circuit breakers. Mm -hmm. without without uh, giving global uh, permission. Yeah, I mean, I think this would be, um, you know, better for chains like Osmosis where they suddenly need to halt a particular pool from swapping 
as opposed to swap <laughs> shutting down the whole chain because there's like back channel turn off your validator discussion so i think in general this would be a a good alternative so and like, on the cord so that'd be like another level of um another level of granularity so it's like there's like address per like message type and then you're suggesting that like there's like internal message data that should also be a level of granularity to check. Yeah, I mean, if the filtering is not super expensive, then it seems mm -hmm. reasonable. Okay. Um, hey, everyone. Um, on my side, yeah, I would say um, a more granular, granular approach is definitely the way to go. Because um, I can see, at least on our side, we could kind of spin up working groups in the groups module, and then they could have different control on different things on our chain. Um, quick question though, um, because since Dragonberry, I've been you know reading a lot. The SDK team has been looking into all the different forks that are out in the ecosystem. Um, is this the SDK's team kind of approach similar to Osmosis's um, expedited proposals, or is this separate? And what is your guys' opinion on expedited proposals? Um, so, so we we want to we want to do expedited proposals. So that's like something we want to land in mainline gov um, without question. It's a, it's a very useful feature. I think the the only thing from our side is um, is it's yeah it just it's just a matter of like basically resources um, we're like resource constrained on like how much we can do at once um, and at least for like this release uh, we we're trying to keep the scope really small and so that's why we we didn't spend time on it um, but it is something. I believe uh, even Bez brought it up in our in our team call um, twenty minutes ago. Okay, yeah, no worries. I was just curious if that's something planned or not. But yeah. Awesome. Um, so that brings up like a, so I think the, the granularity of per message is a, a simple implementation. I think the granularity on like message content um, adds, adds a bit of complexity, but I, I do think it's still doable. Um, and so I do think that's like a, the, a good thing. The only, the only question is like, um, I guess John, uh, not John, Joe, um, if it's like a bug in a certain, so like you would want to prevent like a certain pool because there's a bug in a certain pool, um, but then wouldn't that mean there's a like bug on like all the pools in that example? I'm I'm thinking of the once in a while case of someone's stable coin depegs, and sure. it would be nice to stop trading while. <laughs> uh, you know, effectively, a rug is being pulled. That, that's a that's a good point. Um, very good example too. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to make it diplomatic sounding. <laughs> um. But I guess that would require foresight <laughs> into creating that sort of granularity i mean i i think it's um like if uh it could be like a plugin where um i mean yeah the, the problem there is that you do you you may have to do like an emergency upgrade unless you do the granularity like the granularity could be an interface that like maybe someone uses a cosm to, to interact with and someone uses just go plugin like a generalized plugin but the plugin would involve you most likely having to issue a new binary um like a coordinated upgrade or like a an actual upgrade um right yeah but, so it's uh, kind of like auth z but uh for mempool filtering yeah and i think this plays really well into um into the app side mempool work that will be coming along with 047 um because we have we kind of have finer grain detail into the, the mempool itself. 
by the way, just to get like a little bit of a clear understanding of like the release timeline for Twilight, um, mm -hmm. once the beta is cut after a few of those PRs that you were talking about earlier do get merged, um, what exactly what exactly is like the road to a stable release? Um, we're we're going to spin up a testnet. Um, so we're going to do one internal testnet where we upgrade from previous releases to the latest release. Um, we'll do a public testnet where anyone can join, play around with it, and we will also like play around with it, try and take it down, um, do various message execution paths that were updated. Um, we'll do an internal audit of, of the code that is being released and the, the code that was touched. Um, and then basically we're, we're ready to cut the release in that sense. Um, yeah, so uh, ideally it's like, I, I wanna say like a week and a half to two weeks after the, um, the, the beta is released is like our, our goal. Okay, no, that makes sense. Um, and then is all the app wiring stuff coming with that or will that still be like optional? So, so uh, it's it's going to be optional even in the future. Um, okay. Right, right now, like um, you could use it, uh, but it's like if you're depending on IBC, then you're depending on IBC to also um, implement it. There is a like middle ground um, implementation, and um, it, that's the app.go on main, and that that has like a hybrid of like some uh, new, some old way of doing it. Um, like my my thing is. Um, like my, my personal take uh, is just like I like for me I wouldn't use software that like hasn't been like um, had the final release if it's like a beta and alpha you wouldn't if like the SDK had a beta alpha you wouldn't use that in production um, and so um, I I can't remember clearly but uh, I'm not sure if there's like a final 1.0 release of that work is maybe Aaron can correct me. Yeah, I don't know if I was like I was seeing loads of little pieces here and there, but I didn't also see any final release yet. So of course, wouldn't use it just yet. I mean, I think Wait. we could probably tag the Depinject stuff as a 1.0. It doesn't have the code gen completed, which is you know one thing we wanted to have, so there can be some increased auditability of it. Um, there might be some changes as to how we're wind, wiring things up, and you know the. The future setup should be sort of more ergonomic, but um, it's not our top priority to necessarily clean up all that stuff right away for this release. Um, it's more sort of for the next release, more planning on doing more cleanup of framework level stuff. You know, that makes sense. I think, yeah, totally would be up for waiting until 4.8 or something later um, for the app wiring stuff for sure. Awesome. Thanks for the question. Um, uh, so we got a UX question answered. So that's actually really good for the circuit breaker. Should be a, an easy enough implementation, and we will um, uh, push that into our uh, roadmap um, for hopefully before the end of the year. So the the gov cancellation work. Um, uh, Bez or someone uh, involved in the PR want to chime in. Is this a side for request? Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, I mean, I can like, quickly talk from like the perspective I have. I was talking yeah. with Sam. Uh, I mean, we had like a lot of chats about like you know what's good, what's bad, and how to do it. And then one thing I was trying to see if it's valid, is like, you know, reducing this manipulation. Uh, so one problem I had that, you know, if we can cancel any time is that, okay, it could be kind of manipulated because if the proposal doesn't go in a direction someone wants, then on the last moment he can cancel it, right? Uh, so that's what I was trying to be like good against and like have some buffer that let's say um, the uh, proposal can be canceled only in the first 90% of the time or 90% um, of the blocks, right? And then um, uh, not later. 90, uh, like nine zero or one nine? 90 or whatever the parameter. Yeah. yeah. 
parameter, right? So, uh, but then uh, some was like really against it, and um, the market should evaluate it, and you can do another proposal. Um, yes. Uh, so, I mean, I'm not anymore like strongly <laughs> arguing that um, about that. I Me mean, personally, I still think that it's better to avoid like this kind of a manipulation and like having a parameter for that i think it's good so let's say like if you if you set the parameter as 100 percent yes it means that it can be cancelled anytime if you set the parameter 90 percent yes then only in the first 90 percent of the time it can be cancelled so i mean that's it increases a little bit the complexity uh i think it's better but again um what, what was Sam, again anymore for that? What, what was Sam's reasoning against it? That we don't need that that market um like you have the intrinsic cost for it, right? So like uh, the proposal itself uh, should be discussed before. And I mean, so let's firstly say that you know the the main motivation of it is that you know like the proposal is wrong, and uh, we find out later on that oops, yes there might be a bug or like in the in the in the software upgrade proposal uh, specifically when you have a hash of the binary right <laughs> so, um, and um, well the the chain doesn't check the hash it's only cosmo are checking the hash uh, right or like by the parameter itself so for example by the way recently we uh, were discussing uh, at Dumi, uh, one of the parameters for the market you were going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and the last um, edit, uh, in fact, was a bug. So we made everyone back. I mean, it's not like a critical one, but not something that we wanted. Um, so it's like it's like right now. How would you cancel that proposal if it was like a prime change? I mean, you'd tell everyone to vote no. Yeah, you create a new parameter proposal to upgrade it, right? But um, I mean, again, it's not critical yet. But um, you know, it may happen that. There might be some critical and someone copies the wrong version or didn't update to the latest one, right? So in this case, it would be good to cancel it. Uh, right, but still, uh, what if, let's say, you have kind of a atom one, atom two, and there is some drama, and, <laughs> and someone doesn't see that it goes in the right direction and then wants to cancel it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I, but the, the cancellation still, like, if you say the, the cancellation um, I guess this would be like, there would be like two parameters here, right? There would be like one parameter for like the duration you're able to like cancel like 50%, but then at 50%, you can say like, if you cancel at this point, you only get 75, you only get 25% of your deposit back or something like that. Right. So, uh, so that's the cost, right? I mean, the cost is not that big, right? Like depending uh, on the chain. Yeah. Yeah. So you have uh, an on-chain cost, which is that like, fixed. I don't know what's for Atom now. I mean, for the hub. 64 uh, items, yeah, not that much. Atom, so 648, it's not that much, right? It's really not much, in fact. If something is controversial, then, you know, $640, okay, many people can yeah. you know, take it. Would, would well, this uh, open up spam that they would create proposals, deposit, and then cancel before 50%? <laughs> so, no, the fees itself, yes, it, it's meant to protect against spam right like you know yeah, if you, want you, to you, you would they, they wouldn't get 100 percent of their deposit back they'd okay. only get a um parameter okay. yeah, yeah, so yeah. If, you, if you cancel so like the current proposal is that you have a parameter yes part of it will be burned or sent okay. to the people i don't remember now cool. i think uh, to the community pool and uh, uh, and the rest will go to you um so uh yes i was thinking me to do the review i did like a review two weeks ago or three weeks ago about like you know what we want to agree on so again i don't want to argue anymore about that you no know, gaming part uh, but there were like no new comments so i told sam uh sam sorry sai that you yeah, go ahead with let's say the simple version and then we can update it needed. um so that's like the current status quo uh if anyone also thinks that this game ability is kind of important then yes please respond or maybe let us stop now just to say what do you think again like what i want to say is that if we make it as a parameter 
I mean, it should be a parameter anyway, as yes? like, why it's fixing to 90% or 80%, right? It must be a parameter. So if it's a parameter and you, if you said 100%, then uh, yeah, you still have this, or, uh, I mean, uh, kind of a simple version of that you can cancel anytime. Okay, I might be a little bit late to the discussion here, but for starters, really like the idea of having um, like a ratio of like how long you can actually cancel for. Um, mm -hmm. Random thought here, what happens if we had, for example, like a cat cancellation fee that got sent to the community pool? Um, so basically, like if you did want to cancel your proposal, on top of your deposit, you would also have to like pay a fee um, that would then get like contributed to the community pool. Um, but that way, at least, that might solve the gameability question there. What if you don't have that? So, like, if I would do it, I would create a new account, and that account yeah, of course. would have, like, you know, enough tokens, yes, to cover the deposit. Yeah, okay, that's a good point. Yeah, which is an idea then. Um, yeah. Any other person has an opinion? So, yeah, I mean, as I was thinking, me, yes, I was going like to, uh, from my perspective, approve it. Although I still think, me personally, is that that parameter makes sense. And we can do it like in the second round, let's say, you know, like as a new feature. To um, not that pull request anymore. Let me just see. Uh, Bez, or Bez, I know you've been reviewing it a bit, and Amari, do you guys have opinions on this? No, it's been a while since I looked at the PR. I mean, I thought it was in relatively good shape. Um, but that was prior to these recent discussions taking place about um, incentives and what whatnot. So I need to look at it again. Um, I've just been busy with the ABCI integration stuff and reviewing that. Um, I don't. Yeah, I need to look at it again. Unfortunately, I so so in the, in the current design, there is no. There's the first parameter on the fee. Uh, but there's not a second parameter, you said. Yes. Uh, um, I think I probably wanted to say something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think. I mean, so there, there's a there's a thread on Discord. Um, it's in it's in the general Cosmo community uh, channel, and there's a golf cancel proposal thread, and I think that's where the latest discussions are happening. And so, for example, Sam was proposing kind of like a fee to cancel. Like, if, if you want to cancel, you you pay for a fee. Something that John, I think you proposed. Um, so my general impression is that there's still like design. There's a design decision to be made, and yeah. So this we, um, have, we never proposed like additional thing. Yeah, or so, yeah, I think so. Anyway, I think like would be good basically to do it. I mean, if more people agree what I was saying about the uh, like this game ability, then we can do it basically as a separate separate feature. Like no, a new proposal and and implement it as a new feature. Like, I, as a new pull request, right? Like I mean, I I think if it's um if there's the, I I see Julian's also. Um, commenting on the PR. Julian, do you have a take as well? Well, my issue was in the current implementation, uh, no fee where no deposit was refunded. It was sent to the community pool, the rest was burned, so you had no incentive to actually cancel the property. And and Anil actually mentioned that as well. And uh, we just discussed some of the implementation, but I don't think there is any update since. Okay. Um, I, I'd say like, let, let's have, let's, 
continue the design discussion because if it's like if there's decision to add that second parameter it, it'd be nice to do it all at once instead of like adding it later and then like um so this how does that sound with i mean i think julian and amory you guys are kind of like the, the most involved right now on this call right now yeah i think so if we can like put all the people that are interested in this into one thread and make a decision there that's the fastest way i think where, where is the where is the thread it's like looking at it um i'll ping you on discord okay yeah, i think julian you pinged me as well but i lost it um oh now i found it okay yeah okay awesome um sweet uh yeah and if you if anyone else wants to be added um definitely let me know and i can we can add you to the 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 thread to discuss this um, uh, i see that i basically so there is a lot on the best and there is a lot from memory on the pull request yeah this is uh he hasn't looked at it for a bit, so I think Amory and Julian are the most up-to-date on the current standing of it. Um. Awesome. Um, Robert, I believe you added current estimate of 047. Um, we're, we're trying to cut the alpha beta um, this week. Um, it, we're waiting on one, one PR, um, the ABC one point integration. Um, the authors are waiting for uh, us to review it. Bez already reviewed it. Um, I invite anyone else to review it. Um, maybe we can get that in uh, tomorrow. And then we can cut the release branch and begin working on um, test nets and uh, our queuing process. So you want to cut alpha or beta this week? Um, I think this this would be like initially beta, and then we do some audits and testing, and then we'd cut alpha, and then um, or straight to RC. Um, so yet to be seen, but um, at least there will be a release branch. So if you want to cut out by beta, then there was there is not going to be alpha anymore. I mean, the difference is that you know, beta is the feature phase. Yeah. So um, we'll we'll cut one of those tomorrow, and then we'll start like the test nets and everything. Um, does that help answer your question? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, that completes the agenda that we had. Um, does anyone else have? We have sixteen minutes. Um, would like to open the floor to any questions um, or any discussions that you would like to have. Uh, yeah, maybe one question about like this IAVL. So what we are planning with uh, uh, 047 and IAVL? Uh, so so the, the node key format change won't be in, in 047. Because we, we still have to figure out, uh, this is discussions that we're currently having, like the ADR, um, the, then we need to like do the implementation. So there's one implementation of one one of the proposed ideas, the other implementation um, needs to be modified, um, and then make a decision on like if we're removing the orphan system right away, I believe we are, and then figure out a migration path. Um, and there is no way we're going to do that in the next two weeks. So, um, so, but there is the potential that it could be something like a backwards um, that like we could amend a minor release to support it. Um, but before I make a guarantee or we make a guarantee around that, um, we will be doing some internal testing of um, on live networks with those changes. So there is no like a feature leaf or a feature uh, or like optimization between 46 and 47 on IAVL side. Uh, on the IBL side, they, um, there, no, there's not, we, because we backported everything. Yes. There, there is like one thing we could sneak in, but the optimization 
doesn't lend to like the performance that everyone's looking for in IBL. It's basically like proof construction for uh, the proof construction just gets a bit faster because ICS 23 is native to the tree now. Hmm. And by the way, the uh, so the caching layer is on by default or off by default? Uh, which caching layer? The, the fast node system? Cache. Yes, the fast, the fast node, yes. I think it should be off, right? Because there are these issues with startup. Uh, yeah, it, it's off by default. Um, in 045, I believe in 046, uh, it's on by default. Yes, um, for, yeah. for six, for sure on. Yes, it like, it's yeah. time to start the notes. So, yeah. I mean, just asking, I, I didn't like check if that was changed or not. If not, then just yeah, like a some, last minute some... thing, I would propose it. Uh, yes, maybe like a, a question. So we have what now base up 1.1, right? Uh, what's the what's the like estimate for the um, uh, like I don't know ideal? I mean, the, like the next is there like a roadmap for the uh, I, uh, ABC I pastas? Sorry, I missed that. Someone was calling me on repeat. Oh, uh, we well, just asking openly. What so was the question? Are, and now we are releasing uh, base at 1.1. Um, and was just asking us if there's like a, a roadmap for ABC as that's like what will be the next thing. And um, yeah, so in, in 047 Twilight, we are releasing with uh, ABC 1.0, which includes the prepare and process proposal. Um, and then the the team on Tendermint, so I believe Thane's also on this call. Um, he can also chime in on the Tendermint side, but um, they are working on inclusion of vote extensions and finalized block. Um, and so we're working closer with that. Um, but uh, uh, to my knowledge, there isn't a timeline, but maybe Thane, uh, you can chime in. Sure, sure. So the timeline there, we're, we're currently looking at integrating uh, vote extensions and finalized block into 038, Tendermint 038. And we're aiming to do that this quarter still. So by the end of the year, hopefully by the beginning of next year at the latest, so January sometime. Okay. Where's the best place to like to read about it? About these two new features? Uh you mean ABC I plus plus in general? No, like the the like roadmap and like the next feature coming in. Like... Oh um let me you mean just in Tendermint? Like what the issues in Tendermint or? No, I'm asking, so you're asking about Tendermint, uh, where to to see our current priorities? Uh, yeah, like, no, kind of looking like, okay, so now we have this um, uh, prioritization, right, in the app? Uh, I've just shared our project board here. So what I'd recommend is taking a look at the current priorities on our project board. We have we started putting together a release plan for 038. Uh, we did some cleanup needed on that issue. But um, you can see what's scheduled for release in 037 and 038. Um, we haven't started putting together a release plan for 039 yet. Oh, I see. Thanks. Sure. And was the ETA for 47, 37? 37, um, that's once the SDK is done with their QA. Um, we've already cut the first release candidate for 037.0, so that's already available for Tendermint. And um, so far from our QA process, everything looks stable. But um, we'll wait on the SDK to let us know once they're done with their QA process, and then we'll cut 037.0 as the, the final 037 release. We also have a couple of additional updates that we've scheduled into 037.1 already. Um, so we'll be releasing 0371 pretty shortly after uh, 0370. Okay. 
Thanks a lot. Cool. Awesome. Amazing. Uh, thanks, Robert, for the questions. Um, anything else from anyone? Otherwise, we can get off nine minutes early. All right, let's uh, end it a bit early. Everyone have a good weekend. Enjoy. Hopefully, um, you're somewhere warmer than Berlin um, and also somewhere brighter um, because it's, it's, it's 6 o'clock and I already pitched black over here. Um, but enjoy the rest of your weekend. Ciao, ciao.